take me through what caused you to vote the what caused you to cast the vote the way you did you know over the last month and a half watching uh, the president continue to push something that it just wasn't true uh, the electoral college does not have the ability or the congress does not have the ability to overturn the electoral college it just it wasn't true the whole time and uh, as that vote was continuing to get closer and closer I mean, I, I did every ounce of research I possibly could. I watched every single one of the members of Congress's conversations. Um, I mean, obviously I had COVID, so a little bit different situation, but uh, watched everything I possibly could, read everything I possibly could, continue to read the Constitution over and over again. And what he was saying just wasn't true. And, uh, and I believe that led to what happened on January 6th. Uh, as far as the specific speech that morning, do I believe that was the worst thing? No. But... Uh, did that play a role in January 6th? Absolutely. Those people showed up with weapons. They showed up in bulletproof vests, the ones that were there to cause harm. There's a lot of people, good people there that weren't there to cause harm, and we know that. They were there to support their president, which I totally understand. The ones that came in and did harm and, and literally destroyed the Capitol and killed Capitol Police officers. I mean, that's what we're dealing with here. And uh, when we saw that play out and we saw the folks continue to do that, and the president continued to say the same thing, um, and then even pushing other things like that was Antifa in there or other things that just weren't true. And we know that because a lot of these people have already been arrested, we know who they are. They're not Antifa. They're not these things that these conspiracy theorists are saying on TV and saying on social media. The reality is that they were supporters of the president that were led to believe that if they put enough pressure on Congress, that they could overturn the will of the people. And they're just not true. And so now we've got loss of life. We've got a black eye because of the whole world watching our capital being overtaken. And here we are today. I had a vote. Do I wish that vote had been delayed to another day? Absolutely. Do I believe there's more information? Yes. But with what I had in front of me today, I voted what I believe is right. You know, you, you uh, indicated that, uh, you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi, kind of, you pushed it through, ran it through. Yeah. If I, if I can play devil's advocate, I mean, the guy only has eight days left in office and there wasn't a whole lot of de more delay uh, that she could do, one could argue. Uh, what, what do you say about that? Well, she could delay. We could impeach after he's out of office. So she could have waited a month, she could have waited two months, she could have waited three months, she could have waited however long she felt. And I truly believe we should have done more research, more to investigate. But I did not have that luxury when I had to vote today. What I had in front of me today was what I had and what I saw. And I've gotten briefings over the last 24 hours uh, from law enforcement that are, are in charge from uh, the very bottom here at Capitol Police all the way to the very top with FBI. Uh, we saw enough, I saw enough information to lead, lead me to believe that these people were there to overturn the electoral process. They were there to stop us from doing our constitutional duty. One, one argument for impeachment, and it's really not a very good argument, uh, is that um, uh, we need to get Trump out of office now because he is dangerous. That's what pe some people are saying. Are you concerned about him being in office? So, you know, uh, I mean, at this point right now with today, yeah, I think this plays a role. But if you look what's been going on over the last week, uh, there is some concern. Do I believe the president's done some good things for us, especially in the Central Valley when it comes to water? Absolutely. Will he continue to be helpful over these next seven days? I hope so. But the, the reality is, is something happened this past week that we can't take back. And we've seen things happen all across the country that were wrong. We saw people on the left encouraging a lot of that, and that was wrong. My vote was to say that even when my side does it, it's wrong. That, that's the only thing. Uh, Would you have preferred a 25th Amendment solution? So reading Pence's letter this morning, the, the vice president didn't believe that the 25th Amendment uh, played a role here and that he had that constitutional right. Uh, and I, I do believe the president, the vice president is correct. Um, I mean, this is for, it, it probably could have put us in a situation where uh, this could have delayed it out even lo uh, longer. Uh, but I personally believe that Nancy Pelosi made a huge mistake in bringing this vote up this quick and this fast. But my vote wasn't on timing. My vote was on what I had in front of me. And they, when we got word uh, of how you voted, I had two different <laughs> text messages from, from acquaintances who said, well, T.J. Cox is going to hate this because this takes something off the table uh, in the next go round. Did that enter your mind at all? No, because the reality is, is uh, there's a lot of people in my GOP base that is not happy with me. And so uh, 
Do I think this helped me politically? No, I do not. You talked in the very beginning here about voting your conscience. Uh, just take me one more time through that. You, 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 so you think voting your conscience is voting the right thing to do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's when we see the rhetoric that was pushed out there, the, the people that did that to the Capitol were led to believe something that is not true, has never been true, and that lie was continuing. And many people were telling the president that these things were not true. I mean, did he have the right to challenge it in court? Absolutely. I support that right. And that's what the process is. The process played out. He lost in court 60 times out of 61. He did not have a case. It moves on. Those states certified one slate of ballots for each state. Our constitutional duty is to count those ballots. It is clearly defined and is clearly written in our constitution. I read that over and over and over again leading up to that day. I watched that process play out and the president continued to push that out. That was not true. He tried to get the vice president and the vice president said, no, I, we do not have this power. And if you watch what the vice president actually said be, before each and every time that he brought uh, a slate of ballots from a specific state, he actually made the phrase a little bit longer to make sure everyone knew these are the only ballots from said state. And these ballots are here and we know them to be true and to be certified by that state uh, governor and secretary of, uh, uh, of state. So he was going out of his way to really make sure that we knew uh, what those ballots were and what we were voting on. Bob, I yeah, think you answer Go on, Bob. You, you, answered, you answered this pretty well already, but I'll just ask it one more time. Was the uh, election free and fair and uh, did we have a correct uh, verdict? You know, we've dealt with election fraud for a long time. And I, I know from my own personal experience that we've run across a lot of it myself. Um, I have not seen enough evidence to say that the election was uh, uh, was incorrect or came out. Do I believe there's some out there? Absolutely. I mean, there's always some sort of election fraud out there. But as the courts have decided, there wasn't enough to overturn the election. And as those states, governors, I mean, in some of those states, they actually recounted hand counts to verify so that people couldn't try to blame it on Dominion. And so I think we've had enough information to verify uh, that the election was, the outcome was what it was. Uh, David, are you, are you gonna be in Washington uh, this weekend and or uh, in Washington for the inauguration? I'll be there for inauguration, but I will not be, uh, my plan is to be home. Okay. Oh, oh, you're gonna actually attend the inauguration, you mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, it's the inauguration, and I have the opportunity to be there to watch one president take over from another. And I watched from uh, Obama to Trump, and I think it's one of the things that makes our country great, a uh, peaceful transfer of power. Absolutely. And by the way, something I should have mentioned in the beginning, but important, uh, glad you're feeling better, glad you're okay. Thanks. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of folks joked with me and said, you should uh, pretend to be sick and stay home before <laughs> this crappy vote. But I, I could, my honest, my job is to do what I'm supposed to do. It's go there and vote. And uh, and I felt it was my duty to do it. And obviously I wasn't going to play games with that. I understand, by the way, there's going to be a vacant seat at the inauguration near the front. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if, you call, if, yet, if that's been claimed yet, dibs wise, but just throwing it out there. And I'm thrilled that the vice president's going to be there. But uh, I think it would be important for the country to heal uh, if the president chose to be there. And I think it would be uh, the right thing to do. Um, I know from personal experience that losing is not fun, uh, but the right thing to do is, is to move on and uh, continue our great experiment that we call this America.